Our sponsor today is Pop Beauty. Look at this amazing yellow bag they sent me with these amazing products. All of these products have vitamin C. Let's start with this cleanser right here. It smells pretty good, I have to say so myself. I put this on all over my face. Tap, tap, tap. And then I thought, oh, I have a new facial cleanser that I bought on Amazon. It's pink, so beautiful, so easy to put on. Now we have stepped up our game and dried off with a towel. Then leave this gel exfoliator for two to three minutes. Then we put this serum on. It feels so good. It makes the skin feel so nice. And then we finish it off with this amazing moisturizer. Pop Beauty takes the guesswork out of your beauty routine with easy skincare solutions and makeup for cheeks, eyes, and lips with high quality formulas you are gonna love. Make sure you go check out popbeauty.com. Now let's get into this week's episode. Anti-Social Butterfly Podcast. We are here to inspire dreams and help you spread your wings to fly. Baby girl, it's okay to be shy. But now it's time to kiss fear goodbye. Hello, welcome to Antisocial Butterfly Podcast. Hi everyone, welcome to a new episode to your favorite podcast. Make sure you hit like, subscribe, come back. We welcome you with open arms. I am your host, Lizzie Correa. I am a makeup artist. I love to inspire people and share fun stories, talk about trendy celebrity news, and share some motivation to get out of your head and start living the dreams that you were meant to live. This week, we have a brand new episode talking about makeup brands, how they got started, who is the founder. I am so curious and always wanting to learn more about the companies that I support and love. And since I love makeup, why not learn about the companies? So here we are, we are gonna get started. We started last week diving into a Revolution Beauty, which is an awesome makeup brand that supports anti-social butterflies, supports your girl here, Lizzie Correa, by sending beautiful makeup products for us to try. And we wanted to learn more about Revolution Beauty. For me, it was a fairly a new brand that came into my world. So I wanted to learn more about how it got started, when it got started, who were the founders. And for my viewers here in the YouTube space or Spotify, wherever you are possibly watching this and saying, hey, where are you, Lizzie? Where is that face of yours? Hey guys, well, it has been an interesting busy month. It is my month. Wait, hold on for my fellow Leos out there. Don't come after me. It is our month. Leos, as you guys know, we celebrate our birthday the whole entire month. It is our month to celebrate it every single day. Today, when we are recording this podcast, it actually happens to be Kylie Jenner's birthday. Happy birthday, Kylie Jenner, my fellow August baby sister. I know Kylie Jenner has been getting a lot of heat lately, and it's her birthday month, guys. Let's maybe loosen up. For those who may not know, she got a lot of heat because she flew her private jet for only 17 minutes or something about that nature. People were like, why are you flying your plane? You are contaminating the air for no reason. So Kylie Jenner is turning 25 years old. Happy birthday, Kylie Jenner. Then she released some photos of herself in her lab. And a lot of people were getting at her because she wasn't wearing the proper gear. She wasn't wearing a net. She wasn't wearing gloves. But people sure did have something to say, saying you are contaminating the makeup. You don't know what you're doing. But regardless of the Kardashians, whatever you say about them, they will do as they please. They will keep moving along and keep making that money. On other Kardashian updates, our girl Kim has broken up with Pete. A lot of people knew that this was going to end very soon. 
People didn't think this was going to last. But regardless, when people break up, it's very sad. And who knows who broke up with who, but from what I read, sources are pointing to that Kim broke up with Pete. They mentioned that there could have been two reasons why they broke up. Right now, Pete Davison is filming a movie in Australia, so they said the time away from each other affected them and also the age difference. And it is what it is. They tried and they didn't work out. Who knows who broke up with who, but we wish them both the best. Breaking up is not easy. There is a process mentally, emotionally, and sometimes physically that people go through when they break up. It could almost be compared to the process of how you grieve. And I don't know, for me, this seemed like all of a sudden, maybe something happened, but I wish them the best. I hope they find their true loves and settle down. I know Pete Davidson was really focusing on himself, trying to be a better person because his wish is to become a dad. That is just so crazy. I wonder who Kim is going to end up with next. What do you guys think? Is she going to date a musician? Is she going to date a comedian? Or is she going to date an actor? Or your average normal Joe? Who knows? Anything is possible. I mean, our world is so unpredictable nowadays. People can be so unpredictable. And all we care is that she lives her best life. And that is what we are doing this month, the month of August. I am living my best life, as all of you should as well. It doesn't have to be your birthday to feel great about yourself and to really focus on self-love and self-care. We all deserve that attention and we all deserve to feel great. It doesn't have to be just once a year. So if it has been a while that you've booked that massage or if it's been a while since you got your nails done, Go get that done. Go pamper yourself. Treat yourself. Now, of course, we all have to budget. We have responsibility, but it doesn't mean you're getting your hair, nails, you're getting a new outfit, you're spending and you're buying a whole makeup collection and now we're spending $500 on ourselves and then we feel guilty. No, no, no. We are not causing that crazy cycle. We need to first do it in baby steps. So maybe just do one of those things. Okay, let's get into this makeup brand. Let's get into learning about Urban Decay. I have loved Urban Decay Cosmetics for so, so many years. When I first started my love for makeup, Urban Decay was one of those first brands that I immediately gravitated to and wanted to buy all of their palettes. Right now, I happen to be staring at the very first palette from Urban Decay that I purchased. Here it is. I'm going to show it right here for my viewers and for my listeners. Let me describe it to you because I'm sure you can look this up. This palette is the New York edition from Urban Decay. I love New York. I love big cities. I've only been to New York once. I need to go there again. Didn't get to explore everything about New York City. So definitely throwing it out to the universe. We're going to go to New York. And we'll talk about who the co-founder was because I absolutely love the co-founder. I love her personality. I love her passion towards makeup and why she started the makeup brand. NYC Palette. I wonder when this came out. Here it is. I found it online. It's Urban Decay's Book of Shadows, Volume 3. I wonder when this palette came out. This post that I'm reading off this website from musingsofmuse.com posted this on August 18th, 2010. Hello, August. August 18th is my husband's birthday. Happy birthday, baby. It's almost your birthday. That is awesome. But when did this palette come out? Let's type in release date. This is what I love about Urban Decay Cosmetics. They were great at storytelling, creating such a cool experience. So not only did you get amazing makeup, the palette itself it gave you a cool experience every time you grabbed it. So there's this little slit that there's this little slit in the box that you would pull out and the eyeshadows would slide out. And here are the colors in this palette: 3693, 4, 8, 12, 16. So in this palette, so there is 16 colors here. Can you believe that all the eyeshadows in my palette are still there? I think the one I use the most is Smog. I was looking at this photo. I'm like, I was getting sad. I'm like, I don't have this top part and I do. There is another flap. There's another flap here on the side and the top flap opens to reveal a pop-up illustration of New York. It also has a mirror in the top. 
I don't know, I love the concept of the pop-up illustration, how you had to pull the flap to get the eyeshadows. The eyeshadows for one were really different. I mean, they were different in the sense where they're not your traditional tan, brown, black colors. No, this had beautiful, bright colors. So this, in fact, was the very first palette that I bought from Urban Decay. I still have it. And if you don't know that makeup expires, it does. Your makeup, every bottle should have the expiration date and let you know for how long you should use it for. So make sure you're mindful of that. So when did Urban Decay get started? I want to look up where can you buy Urban Decay because I know you can buy it in Sephora. Where can you buy Urban Decay? Okay, so yes, you can buy it at Ulta, Sephora, I know for sure. So Urban Decay got started in January in 1996 in the sunny Southern California. And who are the founders? The founders are Wendy Zomner from Laguna Beach and Sandy Lerner. I really didn't know nothing much about Wendy or Sandy or their relationship or how they got started. So let's learn more about Wendy because I am so interested to learn about entrepreneurs when they start businesses. It is not easy to start a business, especially during the times when they were launching their makeup in the 90s. The makeup industry was really different back in the day. It was harder to be successful, harder to climb that ladder because around that time, there was only a few big makeup brands running the show. And we say big makeup brands, we're talking about the prestige makeup that you see in department stores. There wasn't a lot of competition. There was only a few. And Wendy does talk about that. If you guys want to learn more about Wendy, I will link the videos below that I use for my research. But make sure you check out these videos. And if you just type in her name on YouTube, you will find a lot of great videos so you can learn more about her. So Wendy Zomner, make sure you check out her Instagram because she does have an Instagram. We are going to mention later Wendy's latest new project because she did release a new makeup brand. On her Instagram, she describes herself as founder, disruptor, entrepreneur, mama. I think she has two beautiful kids. The original beauty junkie, founding partner at Urban Decay. And she does list her new cosmetic line here called Carly Rae, which is also available at Sephora. But let's get into Urban Decay. It got started here by the co-founder, Wendy. So I love that Wendy did a TED Talk video. And this video can be found on YouTube. She really wanted to change the industry of makeup. There wasn't a lot of color representation in prestige makeup. There wasn't a lot of bright color palettes in the 90s. And if they were available, Wendy says, you could only find them in drugstores and they weren't the greatest product. The bright color palettes were very chalky and she loved bright colors. So she saw a need and she wanted to provide a service for that need. That is great if you're wanting to learn what your contribution is, if you're starting a business, where to start, is look for a need. What do you need? What do you wish you had? That could be just an idea starter right there. So she wanted to create makeup that wasn't available in the market that she saw a need for. She says that Urban Decay's main mission is to accept everyone and not for everyone to feel like they have to fit in with the representation of the makeup brand. When she was coming up in the 90s, there was only several different representations being shown in makeup brands. So there wasn't the full representation of beautiful women of different cultures, sizes, and backgrounds being represented in makeup. There was only skinny models, and not everyone was a skinny model. A lot of makeup brands made you feel like you had to look like the model and that you had to purchase their products so that hopefully you could look like the model. But that was not the message that Urban Decay wanted to promote. But Urban Decay wanted to promote a different message. They wanted to promote express yourself in any way that you want. Be free, be you through makeup. I love that Wendy always had a love for makeup. Wendy is from the great state of Texas. At the age of 13, she was sent home for wearing too much makeup. I mean, who sends a child home for wearing too much makeup? I mean, Wendy, how much makeup were you wearing, girl? But at the same time, I'm like, were some teachers or some students being a little haters? Maybe that brow was too on fleek for some people. She always had an interest for makeup, would love watching her mom apply makeup. And then fast forward time, she meets Sandy Lerner. Now, Sandy Lerner is a very successful woman. Aside from makeup, 
and before she even met Wendy, had already accomplished so much. She had co-founded Cisco Systems and used the money from its sale to pursue interests in animal welfare and women's writing. She is an American businesswoman and a philanthropist. I've heard about Cisco through my husband, through his job. And then she meets Wendy. And in 1996, they come together to create Urban Decay Cosmetics. They wanted to change the beauty industry. Who knows when Sephora got started, what year? Because Wendy stated in an interview when Urban Decay was starting that Sephora wasn't out or wasn't social media. So I'm like, okay, when did Sephora get started? That's crazy. So comment below if you know when Sephora got started here. Okay, this says Sephora was first launched in Paris in 1970. It was released in Paris in August. Ooh, hello, August, my favorite month. See all these amazing things happen in August, but it was in 1970 in the US. Let's put in the US. There we go. So Sephora opened its first United States store in, oh, in New York City. Oh, hello, the palette that I'm holding here, my favorite one, the, my first palette from Urban Decay. New York City theme. Okay, so the first Sephora opened in 1998 in New York City. Whoa, 1998. I was not into makeup back then. No sorry, not into makeup. It's been less than 10 years that I've been part of this world, but I love it. So Urban Decay was later acquired by L'Oreal. I guess L'Oreal has to have their toe in everything. When you talk about what Wendy was going against when she was starting out Urban Decay Cosmetics and when she was only seeing certain prestige makeup in department stores, you gotta believe that L'Oreal Cosmetic was one of those big daddies. It's like McDonald's, Walmart, when it comes to makeup. Urban Decay launched with 12 nail polishes, basically all versions of black and 10 lipsticks, including bright blue hues to stand out in the sea of pinks. I was curious to know how many nail polishes and lipsticks they released. They were 20 years ahead of the trend, which is kind of cool to look back. Yeah, I mean, for them to release those crazy colors back then. Here's a favorite product of mine from Urban Decay that I love, and it's their glitter eyeliners. The Midnight Cowboy is a beautiful beige shimmered color that almost any woman could love to wear. Yeah, I love their glitter eyeliners. All of their eyeliners are great. Their palettes, I mean, their naked palettes. I have a collection of all of their naked palettes. And I'm proud to say it's kind of full circle because I am now working with Urban Decay Cosmetics. They do send me products from time to time and I just can't believe and I'm super blessed and thankful for the opportunities every single day. No matter how horrible my day is going, I try to always start my day with gratitude, end my day with gratitude. And it's so easy to get lost with chasing the next goal. And I've done that so many times, but I always try to go back and appreciate the small wins that I had. And for me, this was not a small win. When Urban Decay sent me the first PR, I literally had to just stop and just take in the moment because I know I was gonna go back into my room and get the next product and do a video. And that was it. I wanted to just really enjoy that moment. And I'll always have a very soft spot and a close place in my heart for Urban Decay because for them to send little old me, small influencer like myself, it really encouraged me of the power of putting yourself out there, but not expecting certain things to happen, but just know that your efforts and just showing up is enough and the right stuff will come your way. So in 2012, Urban Decay was acquired by L'Oreal for an estimated 300 to 40 million. Wow. What I'm looking at right now is an article from Forbes. When did this come out? This came out in 2018. Yeah, I think they were the top three makeup brands in 2018 for sure. I mean, if it wasn't them, Too Faced comes to mind. I mean, who else? was the third one here. But yeah, Forbes says that then 2018, they were the top three makeup brands. Ooh, I love this. So in this Forbes article, she offers some advice for any female entrepreneur who wants to break the mold because she was here to break the mold and break the mold she did. Number one, ooh, I've heard this before. Number one, hire people better than you are. You want to have people surrounding you who are better at what you do. They elevate everything. They bring great ideas. They inspire you. They inspire others. That's how you build a great team. Love that. Number two, know your numbers or find a partner who does. 
Do not underestimate the importance of driving sales, watching your finances closely, and having someone really take care of the money. It can't just be all about the products. Yes, you need balance. Number three, remember why you're in the business you're in. What is your purpose? The sales pitch will flow organically and naturally out of why you're here. I think it's always too important to remember your purpose. Ooh, find your passion, find your purpose. Yes, very inspiring woman. I love her. Make sure you check out this TED Talk. It was very inspiring. Not a lot of videos that I found about Sandy Lerner. I think the voice and face of Urban Decay was Wendy. On the other hand, Wendy has a lot of content, a lot of videos out there to learn about her and Urban Decay. Now, we did talk about that she does have a, a new a makeup brand called Carly Rae. It is a clean makeup, so clean products. And is she holding a blunt? Okay, what are we here? Does it have like THC in it? So a tinted elixir, a primer, okay, mascara, eyeliners, oil, so face products. Okay, so this brand serves up Freedom, Taco Tuesday Energy, love that, and Golden Hour Magic that's open to all. Made of clean formulas, dirty minds, and sexy sustainability, Carly Rae is a California beauty unfiltered. We blend makeup with wellness and create innovative concoctions with innocent ingredients desired for less makeup, more living. Life is too short to spend it getting ready, so let your hair down and come play and maybe take your top off if you're feeling it. Okay, I love the vibe there. So more about natural makeup. Whoa, very different from Urban Decay. But there you go. There is an audience for everything. So if this is more your jam, natural, easy a makeup, maybe you might love checking out Carly Rae. And because Wendy is the founder here, I have a feeling that products here are amazing. So there you go. There is a new makeup brand out there, a new products to check out. So next week, let's talk about another makeup brand. Let's talk about when they got started, who is the founder, where are they now? I mean, Urban Decay is still around, still successful. You could still get it at Sephora, Ulta, online. I have loved every single product of theirs. I'm sure you will as well. And for my Urban Decay lovers out there, what products are you obsessed with? Because I know I probably haven't tried it all. I've tried my share of Urban Decay products, but you know, you can try it all. Make sure you hit subscribe. Make sure you come back, tune in. We are here weekly and I'll be sharing another makeup brand next week. If you want me to talk about your favorite makeup brand, make sure you comment below, list which makeup brand I should talk about next. Thank you for tuning in to this episode. Kiss, fear, goodbye. Bye guys, I will catch you guys next week.